There we go. How do you get comfortable with being uncomfortable when you have OCD? Well, uh, it, it wouldn't matter what kind of OCD you have, first of all. Uh, you could put any kind of OCD after how do you get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And to me, that anyone who knows me or has worked with me is kind of one of the mantras that you'll hear from me all the time, which is, I'm here to help you become comfortable being uncomfortable. And so what I really want for everyone to do is to think about this, this idea that if your goal is to be comfortable all the time, you're going to have a miserable life, right? Because all you're going to be doing is searching out feeling good all the time, and you're never going to be okay with neutral, which probably most of us have for most of our lives, and you won't be uncomfortable with pain too, which is the thing that makes us human. I mean, there are just going to be painful events that happen in our lives, and you're gonna to have to run away or shy away from those if that's the case, if all you're going to do is try to be comfortable all the time. So a good guaranteed way to fail is to try to always be comfortable. A good way to try to live your life and to try to just be able to get through life on a day-to-day -day basis is to be okay with the range of experiences that happen. Will there be really bad days? Yeah, but there's going to be really good days? Sure. So hopefully they balance each other out. Some people may not have that. Some people may. But if if you're gonna to try to predict that and make that happen beforehand, the amount of time and energy and effort that you put into trying to make that happen interferes with you actually just living your life day to day and you miss out on a whole ton of stuff. I, I think people also uh, significantly underestimate how much of what they're calling being uncomfortable is really just a body state. We spend most of our time in our heads thinking that this is a problem of thoughts, this is a problem of thinking but it's actually a problem of the whole experience, your thoughts, your feelings, and your bodily sensations. So uh, if, it, if you look at it through a mindfulness lens, you say, well, thoughts are these kind of words that are written on the screen of your mind and you're looking at them and you're not the author of them. You're just kind of watching them come up like, uh, like credits in a movie come up. And we think, okay, well, that's thoughts, but feelings are different. And sensations, you know, those are way different, right? And you'll, I'm sure you've had lots of clients who are very upset that oh, I had a you know, response, a physical response. It felt like I wanted to grab the knife or it felt like I was attracted to something I didn't yeah. want to be. But it should follow really the same rules. They're all just consciousness, right? So when you're saying you're uncomfortable, what are you really saying? You're saying there's a heaviness in your chest. There's a, there's a tension uh, in your arms. There's a, there's a warmth in your, in your face or something like that. And those are just... Uh, those can be looked at simply as streams of data that are being presented to your mind. And instead of calling them uncomfortable as in they're bad and I'm judging them, I wish they would go away. They're just variations in the color of kind of what you're looking at, just like thoughts, they're coming and going. So when people struggle with being uncomfortable, I try to educate them about this idea that this comfort is an experience you're having in your body that you can watch come and go. You don't have to fix it. And if you break it down into what's actually happening at the sensory level, it's, it's tingling, it's pressure, and sometimes it's pain, but pain too is just one of those experiences that comes and goes like an itch if you're paying a certain kind of attention. And, and you know, I'm, obviously I'm not trying to be uh, kind of rosy eyed about it. I realize that there are chronic pain conditions and, and people who are like really struggling and you need something more than to just kind of, you know, roll with it. But a lot of what people describe as the discomfort, like I just, I have to do this compulsion or I have to get away from this, uh, this trigger. It has to do with they're, they're completely locked up in their head. They're not paying attention to the fact that this is actually a body state and something that they can be present with. And if they're paying attention, it passes like everything else. You know, it's interesting too. There's there's a lot of people who say I'd be okay with being physically uncomfortable, but I'm not okay being mentally uncomfortable as if somehow there's some differences in those and one's more acceptable than another. And I always try to get people to recognize we have an amazing ability to accept physical discomfort and we can also accept a great deal of mental discomfort as well too. And many of these things are passing types of things, but the more that we're going to focus on it, the more it's actually going to come up and the more it's at the forefront of our mind. And then our threshold to find that gets lower and lower over time. And it just becomes easier and easier to feel mentally uncomfortable for things that maybe a year ago didn't make you mentally uncomfortable because you're always searching for where am I mentally uncomfortable today? Yes, indeed.